Justices of the Supreme Court, representatives of His Majesty Osage to the Second, Reverend Dr. Mensa Otabel, my pastor, and all the pastors of International Central Gospel Church who are here, and Mrs. Otabel, my friend. The Honorable Attorney General, the National President of the Ghana Bar Association, Justices of the Superior Courts and of the Lower Courts, invited guests, my family members, many of whom I see here, and many friends, some of them dating back to secondary school. I see them here. Ladies and gentlemen, all protocols duly observed. Um, over the past month, I had been drafting all kinds of fancy speeches in my head, which I was going to deliver today but I decided that I was not going to do any such thing. All I'm going to do is to thank, uh, to thank, to, to give thanks. And I will start off by, of course, thanking the Almighty God. Um, looking back upon my life, I always say my eyes opened in Konongo uh, Dumasi. And uh, that's where I started primary school in 1955. Some of, many of our young judges, their moms had not even been born at that time. Um, and uh, growing up there, growing up, changing school almost every other year, or if we're lucky, you spend it two years in one place and moved to another place. I didn't realize that each change, each day, each uh, whatever was happening, the Lord was um, preparing me for where he, in the end, positioned me. And um, when I became Chief Justice, and uh, uh, for example, we would go on, on the, the inspection visits. And the young men and young women will be flagging and uh, hungry and tired. And they would wonder why uh, we haven't stopped somewhere to eat. And I was getting irritated when they started making arrangements for us to stop in some places and eat. And I just want to go on. The, the former. Uh, judicial secretary said, don't you get tired? <laughs> and I said, yes, but uh, we need to visit these, these places. So just uh, go with the flow. If you put some nuts in your car, lots of water, and then let's go, because these breaks uh, are, are not helpful. We need we are on inspection. And uh, I think that was from all the, all the various uh, situations that I had to deal with right from childhood. So you always go with the flow. You don't, you don't fuss. And uh, one of the things that sometimes bother me about, about Ghanaian modernity, and I use that expression advisedly, is that we think that um, progress means uh, emotional, intellectual and spiritual laziness. The easiest way out. No, 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 no. We need to go with the flow, not complain too much. Complain about important things, but not about uh, trivialities. Now, going back to thanking God. God, um, <laughs> I will say that God, at every step of the way, made my boundaries fall in good places. Somehow, even when I didn't know, it always worked out like that. And uh, 
And then on hindsight, I would see that I was being prepared for, for something further along. And therefore, my, my greatest thanks go to God for all the various situations in which he placed me, in which I found myself. Some of them I didn't understand. Some of them I was protesting. But um, in the end, it all worked and has worked and continues to work for good and I thank him very very much and will continue to thank him every day of my life. I thank him also for giving me the sort of parents that he gave me. People who were disciplinarians and I used to really knock against and kick against the discipline. But uh, I, and, I, and I'm always grateful that even though I was never able to tell my dad that I'm thankful for the discipline, I was able to tell my mom that uh, thank you for all the knocks, the canings, the, the blastings, the insistence and all that. And she said, really? And I said, yes, and I mean it. Uh, they were very good parents, and I think um, as my siblings who are here will vouch, I think each one feels the same way too, and even some of the grandchildren that they brought up. Uh, in, in line with uh, the Lord making my, uh, my boundaries fall in good places, I, uh, the, the day I was um, sworn in as Chief Justice, and the dawn, that's when the Judicial Secretary had, had noticed a, 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 a message he had sent me that I was expected to say something after the, uh, the, uh, the swearing in. And uh, I didn't know what to say. And as I was thinking, it suddenly struck me that uh, uh, I, my boundaries have been in good places to such an extent that every uh, president we have had in this country since uh, the current constitution has had a, a significant impact on my life. Uh, President Rawlings, out of the blue, um, uh, I think for no reason, uh, nominated me and uh, in the end swore me in as a justice of the Supreme Court. I never applied for it. I never dreamt it. I, I never really desired it, but it just happened. President Kufo, also out of the blue, nominated me to the African Court on Human and People's Rights. I hadn't even heard of it. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, the first time I heard of it was um, uh, the late Justice Aqua telling me I should send my CV to his office, uh, to his secretary, because uh, I'm, I'm being nominated for appointment to the African Court. So I had to read up on it. President, Mills taught me taxation in law school and was, I, I always said, was one of the kindest lecturers I had, very patient, and had patience for my lack of knowledge of arithmetic. And so he even passed me um, in the finals. And uh, whilst I was in the African court as as President, he always made sure the ambassador knew what the court needed so that Ghana can support us before the summit of uh, heads of states. And President Mahama was also the same way. Every time he would ask me if there's any particular thing the court needs so that, and if, he does, if they don't understand it, they, he, we can properly explain it to him so he will move our cause for us. Therefore, I had a very successful uh, stint at the African court. I was a member for two years. I was uh, vice president for, for four years, and then I was uh, president of the court for another two years. I don't think anybody since then had, has had a career like that in the African court. And of course, um, 
our current president, President Akufuado, he was my first uh, senior when I was out of law school. In fact, I was, uh, I was moonlighting. I was doing my national service at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. And uh, in the afternoons, I would go and help him out in the chambers, UV Campbell and Co. And uh, because of that, I was able to participate very actively in the very famous case of Mencilo Rice, where a number of important uh, landmark uh, decisions in, 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 in civil procedure as well as corporate law were chalked, and uh, that's where I learned to really, really, really work very hard. Um, Nana Osei-Tutu, Nana, uh, please, yes, uh, Dr. Prempe. <laughs> I know him as Dr. <laughs> Prempe. Yes, he was, he was also one of us in Campbell and Co. And uh, we used to work very, very hard, very hard, really, into the night. And then they will take me to some, some, to some nice dinner, or sometimes we will go to the cave and dance, and then I go home. So I learned to go with the flow, so to speak. You, you, you work hard, but building enjoyment of the process, so the hard work never daunted you. Um, I wish to thank the Lord for all these people who peopled my life and made such a great impact on me. I also wish to take this opportunity to thank Otunfo Osei-Tutu II, who has been uh, my, my secret uh, back support, whether I'm happy about something or terribly unhappy about something, I would call him uh, if, if he did not pick up, eventually he will call me back and I will sometimes cry, sometimes complain and he would always give me heart and my greatest gratitude is to him and I thank him for sending such a powerful group of representatives to come and represent him here in the in a, a, I was officially informed that uh, 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 Nana Asokorehene would be the official representative, but I didn't know that there would be um, additional supporters. Thank you all very much for gracing this occasion. And um, I would, I'm so grateful also to my pastor, Pastor Mensa Otabil, whom uh, I, I sort of met sort of casually just because when we, uh, at, one of, uh, at one of the early um, uh, carol nights at, uh, at Parliament, and we were all lining up to walk in, it happened that he was the person behind me. And I said, your face looks familiar. <laughs> and uh, another pastor said, oh, you don't know Pastor Otterville? I said, oh, OK, 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 yes, all right. And then. Um, may, maybe some months or a couple of years thereafter, something happened, and uh, I, I felt that um, there was a young girl who sort of fell into my hands, and I felt she needed comfort, which I could not give. And somehow, the Lord put it in my head that that Sunday, we should go to church at uh, Christ Temple, because that's where uh, when I asked Dr. Utabil, he said that's where his church is. So for the first time, I went to the church with, um, with Mabina, who is sitting there, and, uh, because she had lost her mom, and, uh, just, uh, and who had been buried the, 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 the day before. So we went, and uh, the service was very uplifting, and, and Doc was very welcoming, so was Mrs. Otabil. And so uh, they, were, they, they became friends, and uh, he became uh, my, my pastor. And uh, then every moment of my life since then, uh, in one way or the other, they have made a significant uh, impact 
on Sundays from various uh, learned uh, sermons. No, those are, he doesn't call them sermons, teachings. Uh, we learn a lot, and I think a lot of people in this country who do not even attend uh, his, his church or who are not members of ICGC have been receiving and ben benefiting from the, his uh, deep, 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 deep life teaching. So I wish to thank Dr. Otabel and Mrs. Otabel and all the pastors of ICGC uh, Pastor Sebus, whom I call my, my spiritual mentor, um, uh, because he's the one who inducted me into ICGC, and, uh, and all the pastors. Thank you all very much for your hands-on care of the flock. Um, I, now, I also wish to thank the members of the judiciary at every level. I've I keep telling people that I've had a very good run in, in uh, being a, a member of the judiciary. Though it wasn't something I desired, it wasn't something I pursued, it wasn't something I dreamt of, and it just fell into my, life, my lap. It has been a very, very good run. Um, people, I've made so many friends, and even now I would call uh, I, I, as far as I'm concerned, I've got friends from the magistracy all the way to the Supreme Court, and uh, I intend to keep all those friendships. And I, um, I, I have told everybody that I'm available and to, to counsel, to mentor, because m mentoring is very, very important on the bench. It's a lonely life, and you can only be mentored by another person on the bench. That's the best way of keeping yourself safe. I, although uh, I, I really recall, and my brother Atuguba, he's here, I think. Yes, William. <laughs> we, he's, we, 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 he's, my, he's my twin brother. We were in law school together, and we were sworn in together. Uh, we sort of. Uh, we were toddlers in the Supreme Court together. I, uh, yes, we were called Mofram, Moframban, <laughs> but um, uh, when, we, when we became judges, at least, I, uh, there were certain judges who did not consider us Moframban and who made us feel very, very welcomed. I, I was very well welcomed by the late Justice Amwasechi and Justice Ridu and, and his wife, and uh, Justice Bamfordado, who made sure that right from the start we were part of what was going on. And they are the ones who gave me the confidence to be able to write right from the beginning. The first case I had, I wrote something, even though I was supposed to be Moframban, you know, you're supposed to just <laughs> watch from the sides. Uh, they gave me the confidence, and I remember Justice Amwasechi telling me, my daughter, you're in the Supreme Court now. Stop being so diffident. Your views are as good as anybody's. You just happen to be new here. That is all. So in memory of uh, 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 Justice Amwasechi, I salute him. Um, the staff of the of the judicial service. There's a, there's a, a, a we've, I've had a good time with them, but when I became Chief Justice, I realized that there's a lot of, they are a work in progress. And uh, <laughs> my, my brother, my, my, my brother, you have a lot of uh, work to do to, to streamline the, the, the management systems and structures because um, if you, if you, once you do that, and, and, and it it's started, so they are work in progress, but uh, there are good, there's good material, but sometimes it's square pegs in round holes, but everybody has their niche, and even with the shuffle that we did, we, we, it's beginning to, it has, been, it has started yielding results, but uh, uh, there's a lot more that is going to happen, but I thank you all 
for your support. And of course, the Ghana bar, we've had a mixed kind of relationship. There was a point in time when they, they sort of, um, uh, they indirectly sent me a message through my, my niece, who's a member of the bar, that it appears that I do not like the bar. And I said, how's that possible? I am part of, that's where I came from. It's just that you need to do things uh, in a certain way. And uh, I, it has been a joy working with the Ghana Bar. And uh, both Mr. Forson and uh, Mr. Amenuvo have been a very great support. Uh, and, and they continue to be uh, for both the bench and for the bar and for the General Legal Council as well as the Judicial Council. The members of the Judicial Council, whom I been my immense pleasure and privilege to work with as Chief Justice. Thank you. I see Ms. Elizabeth Ohini sitting there, and I thank you, and particularly uh, you, the ordinary, you, the normal people, people on the <laughs> Judicial Council. The rest are lawyers and judges. And then there's a handful of normal people who have been very, very participatory in making sure they shake us out of our uh, over-specialization into the reality of situations many times. Uh, Dr. Rose Mensah Kutin, who's a member, is also here. She's also a normal uh, <laughs> person. <laughs> She's also one of the normal people. Yes. <laughs> I see some bench members of the of the uh, council, but uh, they are not normal, so <laughs> I'm not going to mention them. <laughs> and uh, I just want to also talk about um, a little about legal education. We need to we need to be very very serious about standards if we don't want to end up with uh, uh, lawyers who do more harm than good. Because even though we don't have the same tenet as the medical profession, where it says, first, do no harm, I think we, need, we could do with adopting that tenet. That, that is our, our duty to make sure that we will not in any way harm any person in this country from unprofessional, unprofessionalism or from professional mis. Conduct and I, and I know that those who uh, I've been listening to the radio, and uh, people have been saying things like, "Oh, when the new chief justice comes, they don't know." <laughs> I think, I think he's even <laughs> he's even more of a stickler. He's even more of a stickler than I am. And uh, today, on the way here, I saw a group of uh, young lawyers crossing the road from the uh, Yellow House to the court complex in their full regalia, wig, gown, bib. And I said, if the, if the incoming Chief Justice sees these people, they will be in trouble. I'll take the opportunity now to actually caution members of the bar against that. It, it, strictly speaking, it amounts to touting. You don't, with outside the precincts of the court, you can, you can walk from this building to the, to the circuit court building. You can do that, because that's within the precincts. But you cannot, uh, when, when the uh, community center courts were in place, you cannot robe and cross the road to go there. That's a different precinct. Let's stop that practice. I've seen lawyers walking along that Makola road towards electricity in their full robes. It is totally unprofessional and misconduct. Even, even just being in your bibs, that is not allowed. In England, people have lost their licenses for be just because of that. Let us maintain the standards of the profession. That's what differentiates us. So I also want to speak very 
uh, briefly about the importance of standards. Standardization makes life easy for everybody. It creates uh, predictability. It, uh, it minimizes caprice. It minimizes, it, and in the end, it minimizes corruption. Because when you establish standards and let the whole world know what those standards are and what the measures are and, and everything, everybody knows what to expect. And so if you feel the standards are too high or the standards are uh, to be adjusted, then adjust it and publicize it so the whole world knows what the standards are. But we cannot, and it will not do a nation any good to compromise on standards. Because without standards, we will never have excellence. And without excellence, we will never go forward as a nation. In fact, one of the principles I'm going to dedicate the rest of my life to is excellence. So I will be boring everybody with uh, <laughs> excellent this and excellent that, but uh, that is the bee in my bonnet. Now, my colleagues on the Supreme Court, um, uh, as Justice uh, Doche said, all of you came and met me, I suppose. Yes, yes because I've been, there. I've been there. When, when, when Justice um, uh, Adinura, when, when Justice Adinura retired, no, in fact, when Justice Atuguba retired, he, he all my entry point people left the bench by that time, but. Those of you who joined in, some of you are already, the older ones who have already retired, I already knew in, in the university. But those of you who are the current members of the bar, you have all been really, really wonderful to work with. You've been a very easy team to work with. We have had, uh, in, in the years, well, 24 years or so, that I've been on the Supreme Court. We had all kinds of ups and downs, situations where people were not even talking to each other and things like that. But um, this team has been really wonderful. And I really thank God that just before my exit, a fresh crop has been added. And that fresh crop, by God's grace, is made up only of women. <laughs> <laughs> It's made up only of women, because women always grace every activity. And uh, I think I told the president yesterday that, yes, thank you, but uh, more of those. And uh, we are expecting that there will be more uh, women also sworn in uh, as in the next year. Uh, the bar is shaking. The president of the bar is shaking his head. <laughs> because there are more women at the bar. There are more women on the bench. It should be reflected in the lower bench and the, the middle bench. It should be reflected as we go upwards. And just because there were more women uh, sworn in yesterday into the high court does not mean that uh, it thinks uh, as they should be in the Supreme Court, there should be more women there as well. So I take this opportunity to welcome to the uh, Supreme Court um, Justice Avril Lovelace Johnson, Justice mm -hmm. Gertrude Tokonu, and Justice uh, Mariama Ousu, who couldn't make it to this event. Yes. Oh, she's, she's gone. Oh, okay. So Mariama is over there. She's, she's hiding over there. Yes. And uh, so, what more do I have to say? I thank everybody. And uh, I thank the Lord. I thank everybody. And all I will end up with is that to God be all the glory. And. Uh, Ghana has the best constitution in this world, and let us make it work for us. So I, I charge my colleagues on the Supreme Court, please protect Ghana by protecting your function. 
the judicial function and particularly the functions that are yours under the Constitution. Let us not compromise it to the advantage of the executive or to the advantage of the legislature. Our Constitution was configured as it was because of our peculiar history. And that is why, unlike many constitutions, so much power was given to the judiciary and particularly the Supreme Court. So let us uphold and protect that function. It's not the power by itself. It is the function that arises from the power and thereby we protect every citizen in this country. Thank you all very much for your <laughs> listening. Bring the ceremony to a close.